Alrighty, it's around day three of Crucible League, which means it's time for a build update. Because iLeague started RF Jug, and the question becomes, is it good? Has the build been as tanky as I hoped? Is Crucible overtuned? Well, I have answers for most of those questions. Starting with, does Crucible feel overtuned? Absolutely yes. I can't really confirm this or anything, but it definitely feels like a tier 16 Crucible boss has more health than a pinnacle boss like Eater of Worlds or Searing Exarch. In terms of my character, I'd say I'm at a decent level of overall investment. While I do have some pretty good items, some of it I found by luck, other things via some money making. Maybe I'll talk about that in a future video. Get subscribed and let me know down in the comments if you want to see a money making video. I've gotten two watchstones, though I'll be able to get the other two very soon. I just need to re six link my chest since I recently swapped to a brass dome, which is a five link until I can get the fusings together. Then it'll be a six link and I'll go kill Uber Elder plus the Maven to get all four watchstones. In terms of gameplay, the build has been faster than I expected. Combining Death Rush and Legacy of Fury makes you feel really zoomy. As for the defenses, given how little I've invested into defenses on my gear, it's horrifyingly effective. I'd definitely like a little bit more life, and to round out my resistances a bit, especially the Chaos Res, but overall, I couldn't be happier. As for the damage, is RF really as ZDPS as people say? I mean, kind of. If you're going into red maps on two four links, it's going to be ZDPS. When you have two six links through a chest piece and a pseudo link helmet, it's not that bad. I think part of the reason why people feel RF Jug is so ZDPS is you don't have that much to do aside of stand there and watch your enemies burn to death. So you notice the time a little bit more, even if you're not spending all that much longer than any other build. And in terms of clear, you blast through maps, any rare that doesn't have cycling resistances melts, and overall it feels really, really good. With that said, let's get into the gear a bit. As a quick reminder, this is just my day three character, 100% as it is. Things aren't going to be perfect, things aren't going to be optimal, and it's all going to change in the future. Don't worry, after I optimize the gear, I will post a full build video. So first up, my Ascendancy, I took Untiring, Unbreakable, and Unyielding. These two feel pretty mandatory to have both ridiculous recovery and great defenses, Unyielding, arguably, you could go down here for Unrelenting. I didn't feel like I was dying all that often, and would rather the AoE to help myself clear. Plus, it is a pretty decent bit of damage, even with only 4 or 5 Endurance Charges. That said, it's personal choice. You could very easily take Unrelenting, especially if you're missing a bit of Chaos Res. As for the rest of the tree, I think it's pretty standard. I'm coming here for Prismatic Skin. I'm getting more Max Res here. I'm getting the Armor Mastery for Max Res here, the Reservation Mastery when I have both Life and Mana Reserved, which is why I have a nice amount of Mana Reserved, that's just a level 1 Vitality. Coming up here, grabbing Minion Damage, this is so Minion Damage applies, which makes the gearing way easier, Ellie Damage, Reservation, and Fire Damage. I don't think my tree looks all that different from all the other RF Jugs, with maybe the exception of Divine Shield. I found it really nice, and it's super helpful when fighting really dangerous bosses that have high fizz damage. Now, coming down here for a minute, the only other thing that might not be standard is stamina. Realistically, this should be a jewel socket. I don't have a jewel to put in it, so it's stamina until I get a corrupting blood jewel. Then, moving on, let's take a look at my gear. Don't mind the junk, I kind of finished a map. So, I've got a wand. If you want to know more about why I'm using this one specifically, check out my previous video where I talked about five RF Jug tips and tricks, including a somewhat cheaper way to get a weapon. Disclaimer, this one cost me about 3C to make, but I have no idea what the price is now, and it does mean you need 183 int, whereas with a scepter, you'd need more like 100. So it's not a perfect solution, but it works pretty well. I picked this ring up for 50C, and then dumped, unfortunately, a lot of essences into it. I lost a 3366 three times in a row. That's four total essences. So let's say about 100C total. I forget how much these gloves were, but I don't think they were very expensive. I'd like to say 30 or 40C. I actually slammed the strength on with an exalt, so maybe 50C. And they already had the fire exposure on hit. It was a really lucky find. I threw a couple of Eldritch Currencies at it to get a max cold res. 
It doesn't do all that much, but it certainly didn't hurt and was better than nothing. In general, for your gloves, you should try to get as much armor as possible while still adding resistances and life. My chest is a brass dome. Uh, it cost me about five divines. That's why it's five linked instead of a six link. I was using a six link before that. It's a really nice chess piece. It nullifies enemy crits, gives you a ton of max res, and a massive amount of armor, which is then doubled from your Juggernaut Ascendancy. This helmet cost me zero chaos. Or more accurately, I spent 60 C for three of them. I then spent one divine for essences, and I then made three helmets, one of which sold for 1.6 divines. I kept this one because it's really good and I'm using it. And I have the other as a crafting base, which... I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Maybe make another helmet that's even better, try to go for both Kunk Effect and Burning Damage, see what I hit, maybe just resell it for 20c. Either way, it functionally cost me nothing because I was crafting as I went, so I got a much better helmet than I would have been able to afford otherwise. Legacy of Fury bounces between 2.5 and 3 Divines depending on the time of day. It'll probably go down over time. These boots are great, they absolutely accelerate your clear, and they provide a decent bit of single target via Scorch. Death Rush, no idea what this costs. I happen to get lucky and drop one. It also makes your clear feel really good. But if it's expensive, I wouldn't buy it because you absolutely don't need it, especially early on. This amulet is, I think, a pretty good find. Plus one to level of all skill gems is really nice since it boosts the level of all your auras. Though plus one fire was much, much cheaper. You don't need T1 dot multi. This cost me around a divine. It was a very lucky purchase. For much, much cheaper, you can get something like plus one fire and a lower tier of dot multi. Last I checked, they were 40, 50 C. That's about what I bought and then sold my old one for. If you're wondering about the mana, um, it came like that, and I'm not going to mess with perfection. The mod's completely irrelevant. And finally, my shield. It's really scuffed. I got this day one. All that matters is the fire damage, open prefix, fire spell skill. The rest, sure, block helps, but the numbers are so small that it really doesn't matter. And finally, the tree, 30 to max life. This part doesn't matter. And 80 to dexterity, again, no inherent bonuses from dex. This is really nice because it saves me one passive and a ring suffix, or two to three passives on my tree. So that's the gear that I'm using, along with a rough idea of how much I paid for each piece. I almost forgot this belt because this belt is very forgettable. Picked it up day one. I forget for how much. Not very much. Probably a couple chaos. It works, so I haven't changed it. With that said, if you want a POB, best way to get the most up-to-date POB is going to be to pull directly from my character, though I will put one on screen right now. And if you don't want to pause the video, that's totally fine. Just hop into my Discord, read the rules, then react to give yourself both the notification and community roles. Then go down to the Build Links channel, and you'll be able to find a POV there as well. And so, was it a good or bad idea to League Start RF Jug? I guess that kind of comes down to personal choice. For me, it was absolutely a great idea. I like that the build is super tanky. I like that the build is reasonably fast. I've never been much of a zoomer, and this build goes plenty fast for me, even if it means the average map's going to be five minutes after jamming in a bunch of things like Harvest, Essences, and Expedition. With that said, does it have enough damage to do Essences? Yes, absolutely no problem. The only thing where my damage feels like I'm struggling a little bit was on Pinnacle bosses, and now that I've downgraded to a 5-link for my RF, I do feel it a little bit on tankier rares with Fire and Ignite resistance. I'm sure once I go back up to a 6-link, though, it'll be absolutely fine. And keep in mind, all of this is without Cluster Jewels. All of this is without a Watcher's Eye, and all of it is without fully min-max gear. There is a heck of a lot of damage I can still get out of a build. In fact, I've seen RF Jugs with over 40 million DPS, which is quite frankly a terrifying number. So if you want to come along and join me on the min-max journey, do be sure to get subscribed. In the next couple days, I'm going to focus more on money-making. Then I'm going to min-max a build, and hopefully it's going to be a blast. Maybe I'll even take down some uber bosses. If you like a build that clears really smoothly, doesn't have too many button presses, then honestly feels really tanky, despite Crucible's best efforts, I can heartily recommend RF Jug as a league starter. And if you want to know more about the build, then the best place to catch me will be on my live streams. I'm going to go live later today over on Twitch. Link will be down in the description. Do be sure to follow me there. 
And then on Tuesday, I'm going to go live on YouTube with a special surprise stream that might involve some rug crafting. With that said, I'm curious, what do you think of the Crucible monsters so far? Personally, I think they're pretty overtuned. And anyone who knows me really well will know that means quite a lot coming from me, because oftentimes when people say, oh, a League mechanic's overtuned, I caution, wait a couple days. Get stronger on your build, compare it to a pinnacle boss, and see if it's actually that scary, or if you're just that undergeared when you encountered the enemies. But I fought those pinnacle bosses, and I still think Crucible enemies are scarier. Which, for me, puts them scarier than the original Arch Nemesis, Maybe just as terrifying as the original Abyss. Shout out to anyone who remembers that. Also, I apologize if I sound a little tired. Ah, uh, it's been a really busy league start. I've been making a lot of videos, doing a lot of live streams. It's going to continue for a few more days, but don't worry, tonight I'm going to get a good night's sleep. And so, with that said, leave me some of your Crucible thoughts down in the comments below. And of course, before I go, a special thanks to my patrons and channel members for their continued support. For as low as $1 a month, you can help make videos just like this one possible. Link will be down in the description. Also, if you're looking for something else to watch, there's going to be a few resources there, such as my RF tips and tricks, something that applies honestly to most builds at League Start, and a really good way to make your first few chaos after you finish the acts. Then you need to get into maps, but you don't quite have the gear. They'll also be up in the card, or you can go with YouTube's recommendation, but it'll be on screen right now. With that said, thanks for watching, hope you learned something, and I hope to see you again sometime soon.